Hey, this is the man. This is the person, Noam Chomsky. In 1957, he has written book and paper. Before that, the grammar, whatever we discuss grammar, here we definitely understand the grammar, whatever you see it here, it's a formal grammar. That is, uh, most of 98% of the spoken languages or written languages found, it has some grammar. And they, uh, they, they don't have any connection yet. Uh, so they are all over the world. They have started developing the, uh, language grammar and it has been shown it is almost similar. Maybe the verb phrase sometimes comes earlier than word phrase. In Bengali generally verb come earlier than the noun phrase. In English noun earlier, verb later. But somehow they have some grammar and the grammar is coming from the culture. And uh, most of this culture and you can create infinite language. We have a limited number of symbols but you can express infinite number of expressions that is same here in our uh, infinite languages uh, if we have some finite alphabet sigma and with the finite alphabet with finite rules you can create infinite strings and you can understand so, uh, and how to understand because you have a grammar so you, by using the grammar is the infinite not a, a certain kind of term, uh, terminals we can get it to a meaningful sentence. That is basically a grammar. That is the first time this Noam Chomsky invented and say that how to uh, word formation, whenever this child is around one year to two and a half year old, child can talk okay, without formally teaching the grammar. Child can see the noun phrase, verb phrase in any prayer. And another thing he mentioned that a person from African tribe and a child he, if he comes to Boston and his accent is you, you cannot differentiate from an American accent. So there is two things. So uh, whatever we our linguistic part it is depends on your environment not your on genetics. So that is one thing. So what the others are speaking around. So you never see you will see that any persons who go to USA for 10-20 years you see uh, his or our English are uh, becoming different. So anyway, the uh, man and woman can uh, copy this thing. Uh, the basic thing is the formal innate uh, learning power is this and uh, this is it. Yeah. Uh, now go to the next slide. This is the man, Noam Chomsky. This is a, he has single-handedly developed the linguist portion and uh, earlier we have an idea of regular grammar, a little bit of context free grammar but all this formalization like from regular grammar is a type 3 grammar and context free grammar is a type 2 grammar context sensitive this all this formalization that type 0 1 2 3 name it is given by Noam Chomsky and he is the pioneer person from this side and you know other side the hardware side we, we very know the, who is the person is Alan Turing the Turing machine he has developed. Yeah, this is the uh, grammar, what we say in our English language. So, we have uh, some grammar and with this grammar we can express uh, infinite uh, uh, English prose and uh, English prose. So, this is the basic rules or this is the grammar. Uh, then you have to check whether this is grammar or context free or not. Definitely not. English grammar is not context free grammar. But if we make a cut down context with grammar, then it will come in our programming languages. So basically our programming languages are nothing but a very subset of uh, our, our local English language. Even you see, you should appreciate the Python language. It is almost uh, like you are reading something, a problem. You do not have semicolon and all this. For readability of the program improves, so it is more nearer to the language. Any, po any portion, anything you can ask the question, you can stop me, you can ask the question. But that feeling should be there. Uh, this is uh, some, uh, this is the symbol, uh, this particular uh, tuple you can say, uh, V for uh, variable or some books say non-terminal. So it is a variable that is, a, uh, this is the sigma, that is the number of terminals sets of terminals, P is the production rules 
and S is the star symbol. Why star symbol? Whenever you are parsing a sentence, now whenever you are giving a number of terminals with IDs and we have to find it out, so whether we can match it, go to S, that is star symbol. The star symbol say in a compiler, see if you are given a program, the, your star symbol should be S and your whenever you are getting a program, it is a basically a uh, strings of terminals, uh, variables and etc. And then we have to first make it a tokenizer, you know very well that is a, uh, by finite state machine, a very finite state machine, input is regular expressions, the definition of integer floating point IDs, we are get the tokens, various kinds of tokens, we get integer tokens, we get uh, variables, we can get operations and we put everything, definition of the tokens and the scope in the, you know, the symbol table. Symbol table must be a hashed one. It can be array, but it will be slower. It should be so that its searching time should be 01 and uh, every variable, its name, definition, scope, function name, all will be there. And uh, after this, uh, uh, this stage, the lexical analysis by scanner, uh, you, it will, you will be uh, basically you get a string um, with the tokens. Okay, uh, fancy variable name should not be there. If you if you give variable name uh, temperature one two three, it will not. It will be token. It will be T one, T two, T two like this. And what is T one? Is a temperature one two three. It will be stored in the symbol table. Now these strings. Whether the strings can, we can match it with the production rules to S. That is the main task. And not only that, whether you can do it and we do it, uh, we always try to do it from left to right. And we can see the strings from left to right and firing rule from the source so that we can reach left to the bottom. That is called top down. And another is left to right, but we are firing the rules on the right hand side so that we can compact it and reach the top. That is called bottom-up approach. The so both approach are legal. Uh, so whether we can get the uh, same tree, uh, it, it is called abstract syntax tree. It is not an ordinary tree, it is called abstract syntax tree. Every tree uh, node is the operation, is a plus, minus, division and, and uh, it's a, a leaf is the, your arguments, like your variables and all these things. Uh, remember this, all this uh, uh, grammar is totally singular. Literally, some of the notions are earlier, but he is the person who formalizes it. He has an extra power to visualize. So, Noam Chomsky, fortunately, he still live, living today and he is a great commentator uh, on political and he is a uh, pacifist and um, any day he should get a Nobel Prize. I don't know why he has not get a Nobel Prize. I think that's it. Okay, so this is a, a type 3 grammar, regular grammar, this is also infinite grammar. You know the irregular grammar, the syntax is A alpha or alpha B like this right linear grammar, if the variable comes for left linear and it is very useful, uh, finite, this is regular grammar, most of the, uh, your, your lock and key, your lift operation, everything is uh, all mechanical, makes mostly mechanical thing. Uh, whatever we see is it is by finite state machine. Uh, it's a regular grammar. Uh, it's a regular expression. But only the negative thing about it, it cannot remember uh, the things. How many brackets it is there, uh, and how many brackets is coming, and how many brackets are closing. Uh, that is its problem. If it, it has memory, but some people say it has not memory. It has memory, but it doesn't have an extra memory to compare. That extra memory should be in a form of a stack. You can argue whether it is not in a formal language class, you can argue why not a counter. We can show you the counter uh, is not appropriate because counter can be overflowed. But here also in stack it can be overflowed. But it is uh, easier for calculation and easier for the counter, how to measure the counter, how to, how with the counter is equal or not. So it is always making the infinite stack is attached to a finite state machine. Uh, called deterministic Poisson automata and um, whenever the language is a to the power n, b to the power n, when the a's are coming, we put it into a stack 
and when the bees are coming, uh, after the a to the power n finish, when the bees are coming, we match one b with one a, and at the end of the string, we see there is stack is free, and there is in, uh, string is also free. So we say this language is accepted. Fortunately, all our programming languages, 98 to 90 percent are deterministic context free language and we can have only stack to detect it ok and but every stack we have a uh, finite state machine that would be different but uh, we can get everything to it that is called type 2 grammar uh, like para, that is the uh, uh, deterministic context free grammar I have told again that is uh, it is the another name is a to the power n b to the power n grammar another name is is a parenthesis grammar I like parenthesis grammar better because you know in program whenever you always write parenthesis except python uh, python the uh, your uh, white space looks as parenthesis but except python you see uh, whatever the language c java we have the parenthesis and parenthesis has to be matched uh, that's it and then then the another grammar that is also very interesting uh, palindrome grammar then uh, another grammar is called that is called ww that is a difficult grammar you remember that is w wwr that is called even palindrome and another is odd palindrome so that it is maybe wwr but one uh, midpoint is missing uh, that is uh, this can be detected only by a non deterministic push down automata and it is interesting but uh, programming language is difficult to find it out to such a machine to non deterministically decide uh, the midpoint has arrived so it is very very difficult even even the con deterministic context free grammar we see there is a, a large portion that we have a unambiguous grammar first of all there is no one to one correspondence between language and grammar what is the thing a language can have many grammar we can say a language is unambiguous then and only then when a language may have 5, 10 grammar to represent it. This represent the same language but we found it one or two grammar uh, which is uh, unambiguous. So a language can have both grammars unambiguous and ambiguous. So we will forget about ambiguous we go for unambiguous grammar and beauty of this there is a this is this finding out the unambiguous grammar is there is no algorithm so it is heat and trial method this is still now this is a there is no algorithm for it so it is not you can say we can find it there is a chance of finding it if it is a deterministic context free from the string we can see you know, whether it can be a deterministic context free grammar you know very well say a to the power n b to the power 2 n it is a deterministic context free grammar so when we say a to the power n b to the power n c to the power n we know we cannot detect by uh, it is a context sensitive grammar so by looking at the screen by looking at the input string we know we have an idea that whether it is a push turn automata can detect it or not um, but not only detecting it you have to find a grammar for it fortunately the grammars are available so we can hint that in the grammar it should be chosen as a uh, no ambiguity then then also problem is not solved then the even the unambiguous grammar we have to see the production rules the we can send the production rules in the two form one is Chomsky's normal form and another is Graivak normal form so both the forms are valid uh, remember the context free grammar any variable should not go to epsilon this is very very vital maybe some books are silent on it so they say that no variable can go to epsilon except except only start variable even start variable may not go so it it, it doesn't mean if you want to put epsilon empty string as a part of your language we never want empty string uh, can it uh, empty string doesn't mean anything so empty string should not be a part of a language even if it is put so if you want to know why you want empty string should be part of our language, then this only start variable can go. No other variable can go to the empty string. Because why? 
because if other variable goes to empty string, then your any rule, the sum rule, right hand side mod would be less than left hand side mod. Mod means length. So only empty string if you say s goes to epsilon, mod s is 0 and mod epsilon is 1. So mod epsilon is 0 and mod s is 1. So it is less. So that is not possible. Right hand side length cannot less. And if it is less, then it is called a total different grammar that is called type 0 grammar. So all this grammar, in type 0 grammar is very, very difficult to parse. But generally, we humans speak in maybe type 0 grammar. But we generally parse it by our emotions, by our signals, by our different ways. Uh, for formally, a computer can uh, very well uh, parse into the deterministic context of grammar. Not only that, it should be unambiguous and it should we should find it out the grammar in such a way that all the grammar rules should be written in Chomsky's normal form and, and Greibach normal form. Fortunately, every context with grammar should not have a epsilon. If it is a epsilon, then it must be from the start symbol and it can be converted to Chomsky's normal form. It can be converted to Greibach normal form. What is Chomsky's normal form? Say a single variable right hand side, right other side only two variable or a single term. So that is it and in uh, Greibach normal form every rule starts with a terminal and all are variables and if it terminals it starts with terminal if we say the terminals is a unique only one can such rule then we it is called simple grammar or race grammar. So whenever we get a we string by looking at the string, if we know there is only one rule can fire, then uh, it is very easy. It, it is a linear grammar, like regular grammar, to detect the rules how it is fired. Then it is very easy. So S grammar is one of the easiest grammar, no issue. But even if it is not S grammar, we can find it out by uh, top-down parsing. That is called top-down LL LL parsing, LL1 parsing. Uh, by look ahead. Uh, only one uh, symbol look ahead without recursive by parsing. There is another parsing technique that is called brute force. Brute force means I, I take, uh, I hunch it, okay, this can be a rule, okay, it is not, then it is not matching, go back. What humans we generally do? We try this, no, mentally, then we try this, no, then we try. So, but uh, for computer, it will take, a, it might take exponential time or it definitely not take linear time. It might train to O n cube time. We have told number of times, but we want this parsing should be O n. Uh, so that is the reason we have to make our modifications of rules such a way, uh, production rules of grammar, uh, that it should be unambiguous. No, not only unambiguous, it should be parsing can be O n. Any question, you can put me in WhatsApp group. I look at the WhatsApp group if you have any questions. Otherwise, I Okay, still now please any questions you can put it. Yeah, the, this is you everybody knows lots of times it is a regular grammar and there is a small subset here. Can you tell me this is a finite grammar? In some languages it has been found that there is only finite sentences and they speak only finite. It is a finite grammar. But until and unless the, it is a uh, infinite possibility, then you cannot have interesting uh, songs, interesting prose. So any language, if has to, it has to be interesting, it must be some rules so that you can introduce infinite length of strength and there should be some meaning. That is the reason language is interesting because it has production rules and by production, applying production rules, you can get a large amount of prose and those prose is meaningful. So that is basically is parsing. Is, uh, we all do with the parsing. Let us see any questions or not. Yeah, very good question. Aditya, what is abstract syntax tree? I have told you, yeah, the, from the, uh, this thing, whenever you, after the lecture or scanner, we will get what you will get. We will get a string uh, with the name of the token plus operation. Then we have to match it uh, from the sim unambiguous grammar so that we can get to S symbol. 
So this is a called a tree. That tree is called abstract syntax tree. Why it is called abstract? This is a tree first of all, binary tree first of all, and node sir is called operation. Which are the operations? Whatever operation, arithmetic expression you say uh, equal to operation, uh, uh, division, multiplication. If, if you take our language, it is simple first. Say is, you say plus minus division, uh, and, and and if you say the plus and division, we want division or multiplication should be a higher, uh, uh, higher, higher uh, uh, value. They should be given by with a bracket. So these things can be represented by abstract syntax tree. So what is the output of the parser? It is the correct abstract syntax tree, and then we will go for semantic analysis. Semantic analysis we will check whether we have conversion is that okay or not. It is much uh, not very critical phase. Uh, most critical or most of the errors are coming from this uh, parsing. So you see that this is the error. Your your you have forget one semicolon or your scope is not correct. Your variable is not declared. Uh, these are all done by this. Your uh, uh, checking your rules by the parsing. It may be uh, top down parsing. It may be bottom up parsing. And we found this in top down parsing. Your language power is being limited. You have so many constricting rules. So your language. Uh, it is more like a computer language, but whenever we will go for bottom up parsing, even in the deterministic context with grammar, you can have a language like uh, Python, it is almost readable language. So, that as if you are reading the algorithm in uh, Python, what the beauty is, uh, you can, as if you are writing your algorithms in your programs. So, that is it. Any questions, uh, you can put it there. So, yes. So, this is uh, inner part is called finite grammar and another thing I missed it, not only humans, even the dolphins, they can also uh, make sentences and uh, they can also, it is expected that they are intelligent, like intelligent and human. Most of the birds and all, they also probably can make sentences uh, with their own grammar, okay. So it is not, that it do, does not only have a 10 sets of uh, our uh, ten sets, uh, ten sets of uh, voices. I don't believe so. Maybe naturalists will tell. Even the like elephant. Elephant is intelligent animal. Uh, like whales and like dolphins, uh, they can communicate with themselves. Uh, when they are communicating, not only fixed sentences, they must have a manipulation of fixed and uh, fixed length words that is called terminals. They can have a more higher level of emotions, and uh, that is called language. Yeah. Any question you can tell me. So this is uh, formal definition. In some books it is say G, some books it is say N, some V. I'm sorry. It, uh, either it is a non-terminal N and V for uh, uh, variable, variable and non-terminal same. This is the terminals and production rules. A is the start symbol. The start symbol should be 1, like in case of unit of the source code. Uh, this, all these things in the formal language thing. And fortunately, this, this definition is same. Only depending on the production rules, you can uh, see whether it is a regular grammar or deterministic context free grammar or non deterministic context free grammar and context sensitive grammar. That's what yeah, this is the, I always, uh, this is my, one of my favorite slide too, it looks this thing. This is a regular grammar, you see the string is a to the power n b, there is no relation between n, it, it can be not a to the power n b, it can be a to the power n, b to the power n, there will be no such relation between name and n, okay. So, whenever you find not only a to the power n b, if there is a, a to the power m, b to the power n, but there should not be relation. If there is a relation that m should be greater than n, then we will not, we have to, we have to match m and n. We need a tool that is called, uh, that is called stack and uh, that then it goes to the context free grammar. Context free rules or left hand side will be always a, uh, always a variable, uh, one variable, there will be no context, that is the reason we call context free. Right hand side can be anything, but I have told you it cannot go to epsilon. Epsilon cannot be, uh, is forbidden. 
epsilon if it is if you allow, allow epsilon to be a part of your language it can only the source symbol can go to epsilon okay so this is the context free grammar but this context free grammar is a huge amount of grammar uh, uh, subset is a deterministic context free grammar that means you can detect the grammar with a deterministic pusher automata and there is a la and every machine you have you can have many languages many languages mean many grammar and if you select a one language which is can be detected by deterministic context free grammar it can have a many language so we have to choose those set which production rules which can create unambiguous grammar that is the role and it is not easy to find it out it is no such algorithm is there so you have to hit and trial method you have to find that unambiguous grammar and then unambiguous grammar you will input a uh, this parser design is also automatic we, we uh, there will be assignment for you you can design a lexer and parser the tools are available you input them the regular expressions the lexer will be automatically created and same way parser can be created if you rules if you say input the rules in the in, in, in general called bakas noir form bnf form bakas noir form i'll discuss uh, next class or i'll make a video on it and uh, the bakas noir form all production rules can be in bakas noir form it is a form from pascal languages then uh, automatically the parser would be generated by the program itself and it will be generally for all bottom up parser are generated by the this kind of tool and top down parser it can be designed by hand by rested if then else but uh, bottom up parser uh, it can be done by program any question you can put it in whatsapp group so again uh, here the main is the complexity n is the number of uh, strings in the your where you want to parse you have to get it abstract syntax tree main goal is from the string you have to give abstract syntax tree you can have a multiple abstract syntax tree that is not acceptable it should be only one abstract syntax tree and that abstract syntax tree can be built from a meaningful uh, using of grammar and there should be only one and only then we call it unambiguous grammar okay but we should be uh, make that tree in the o not o n q it should be o n we have see that if it is s grammar it is trivial it can be o n but s grammar is too simple so we'll try to make it a uh, little more better grammar with the uh, top down and bottom up approach so that it can be o n any question you put it in whatsapp group i can answer any question on this okay let's carry on here it is interesting i have my earlier video this is a linear grammar you, see, you can see uh, this is a polynomial grammar see polynomial is any n whenever n is at the bottom and you put it n n square n to n to the power 100 is also polynomial but a small 2 to the power n if n goes to the head then it is called exponential so your uh, context free grammar fortunately it is a polynomial uh, but it is n cube grammar it is not n4 n cube but if you if you can write a stupid parser which can o n4 nobody will tell you guarantee you can write it but the uh, any intelligent way of writing a parser for any context free grammar it is guaranteed o n cube it is a polynomial why is a polynomial because it is o n cube but if we go for next context sensitive grammar uh, like left hand side variable with some other other variable or terminal uh, this context sensitive grammar is always exponential and it can be owned, uh, detected by a Turing machine, powerful machine. Uh, though it detected uh, like WW grammar or A to the power n, B to the power n, C to the power n grammar. If you have the, all the productions are rules are there, it is unambiguous. But the thing is that it will take uh, ON cube time, which is not at all acceptable. Maybe one or two sentences in your program may have the context sensitive grammar touch into it. Uh, it is, we cannot say the 100 percent of our programming language is uh, context, deterministic context for grammar, but if it should be very, very less. So, then we can afford a time say uh, 2 to the power n times. So, if we have a like 10 some uh, string 2 to the power 10, 
say is okay, but if it is a 2 to the power 100 is a, is a years it will take the compile. So, it should number of uh, terminals should be less, maybe 10, okay. So, this is exponential O n cube and this is undecided. Whenever you go for time zero grammar where uh, any variable at any time go to epsilon, that is the beauty of uh, type 0 grammar. Here also in the context sensitive grammar, only restriction is any variable cannot go epsilon except start variable, but here that restriction is not there. Alpha tends to beta, it, alpha can be anything, beta can be anything. It, alpha can be a string of variable and terminal, beta is a string of uh, uh, variable and terminal, these are the rules and any variable can go to epsilon. So, then uh, it is undecidable, it is no such algorithm. Uh, Turing machine can detect it, Turing machine, also there is a two kinds of grammar, that is Turing machine halting grammar, then Turing machine halts, that is good. If Turing machine halts, that means Turing machine had decided to stop, or, or Turing machine does not halt, Turing machine is always, uh, is uh, does not halt, that is a uh, really undecidable. Now, there is also not a simple phase, there is two phase, one is Turing decidable and one is Turing uh, recognizable. Turing decidable is much simpler grammar, but Turing recognizable more powerful grammar. But remember all these grammars, uh, it, it cannot be used in programming languages. Why? Because the, uh, your uh, parsing will be 2 to the power n, okay, at least context sensitive 2 to the power n. Uh, context free language we can manage O n by clever trick of your ruling your twisting your grammar like this. Any question please put it in your WhatsApp group, anything. We are almost finished today's class, uh, which part of compiler, yeah I think uh, Aditya has answered. Uh, sir, which part of compiler, Aditya has asked, so on which part of compiler stream of atom? not atom, token it should be, it is a, it is stream of a token, it is a lexical analyzer, first stage, it is a lexical analyzer, some people say scanner, lexical analyzer, only this, yeah. So, this is a Chomsky's number form, uh, it is, uh, it is a very vital form because computer understand Chomsky's number form, fortunately all for deterministic context free grammar or non-deterministic context free grammar can be put in Chomsky's number form, very interesting, it, it is done and it is a variable, right? It is only two variables. You can ask like Greyback normal form, why not two, why three, four, five? Yes, it is legal, but then you cannot call it the Chomsky's normal form. Why Chomsky's normal form? Because by you know the binary tree is a good example. It has a two child uh, and binary tree can solve a multi tree problem. Any tree which have uh, many child, we can convert to a binary tree. That algorithm probably you know from a data structure. Any any tree can be converted to a binary tree. Uh, so that's it. Uh, what is the advantage of binary tree? So computer can detect binary tree quickly. And the left hand side, a, a, a two variables is a binary tree, and, and all the leaf node. And for a single this rule, it is a terminal only. Okay. But again here, uh, no variable can go epsilon except the start. Okay. So this is Chomsky's normal form. This is Greyback normal form. Uh, repeatedly told that is uh, Greyback normal form, it should always every rule start with a terminal and left uh, rule start with a terminal and it can have a, any number, if not two, okay, it can be one, two, three, four variables and then if for a typical case, uh, if it starts with the same, only one terminal and uh, then we can call less grammar, but if we have a rule say a v1, v2 and another is a v1 then we call, do not call it a S grammar, but it is a definite uh, Greyback normal form. Uh, so, one subset of Greyback normal form is simple grammar or S grammar. Yes, the, the, here it is S grammar. Why? Because uh, this, uh, if this rule starts with A, this rule starts with B, we can detect. And here, uh, this rule also starts with A, this rule starts with A. So, we do not know where to find. It can be finded out by uh, by you can say brute force method, we try to fire this rule, no it is not, then you will again go back, uh, then fire this rule. So that way, that is called uh, uh, brute force method and that is called a brute force method, any 
string can be detected, but uh, it needs extra space and it needs more time, maybe O n cube time. So, this is we have almost uh, done in the this portion we have already done. This is a lexical analyzer, the symbol table is generated, this phase, this phase is done by a deterministic finite state machine, input is regular expression. What are the regular expression? Regular expression of a language uh, which can be detected as an identifier, which can be a floating point, which can be in all these things. Then you will get a, a string. This is not abstract syntax tree. After successful parsing, you will get your abstract syntax tree here. And then the semantics, this is called the front end of uh, your compiler. This is it. Yeah, I told this is the last two days we are here. Though it is a tough, I am now today I am little bit, uh, I am staying on the topic. Uh, this is the source code. Ultimate, it is basically nothing but a string of terminals and variables with uh, semicolons and everything. Uh, all are there and uh, our job is to get it to S. First is lexical analyzer. Lexical analyzer makes the variable. Uh, big fancy variable name gives id1, id2 and all this whatever translation it put it into the symbol table. The symbol table is an interesting data structure. It should be a, in a hash table. You know hash table in the your python concept. Same with C++. Most of this compiler are written by C++. In C++ you can create hash table. Uh, this is lexical analyzer, then the syntax analyzer, from there you call the abstract syntax tree, uh, it should be unique, then the your semantic analyzer chain. Uh, this is a symbol table, everything, symbol table consists of variables, its symbols, its scope, its resolution, how many, yeah, 32 bit or 64 bit, what are the scope, uh, whether the static variable or not, everything is mentioned in the symbol table, this is very interesting. Interesting data structure. Yes, that is uh, that is as this is called abstract syntax tree. See here the uh, note points are always this. Thing. Okay, so I think uh, uh, we have mostly revised our class. Uh, I can I can stop it right now. Next is whatever we have covered. Uh, next class we will go for uh, LL one parsing, and uh, then we'll start for bottom up parsing LR1, just what are the things we discuss, I am telling it, that is the analysis portion, we try to finish it by the next, next two weeks, we try to finish uh, this analysis portion, we are almost done here, that is lexical analysis is done, uh, top down parsing partly we run, that is one is by, by top down portion, the LL1, LL1 we have done like uh, your S grammar, it is basically LL1 grammar that is seeing only one character, you know which rule to fire it. But there are other few types of LL1 grammars are there. Then we will go for LR1 grammar. LR1 means is a bottom up parsing. LR means from right hand side, you try to find to match the, reduce the string to match it to S, LR1, which is more powerful grammar. We will we have to go into that. Please read the books. Any doubt, I will try to make more such uh, detailed video material on LL1, LR1, uh, how to create this, a separate one. And this uh, this class is basically, whatever we have discussed is a basically, uh, again and again, you can ask any question on your WhatsApp. Uh, so, can uh, that portion, we can like two question I have faced is good, very good. You try to put, it does not look ludicrous, you put any question in WhatsApp. Uh, I try to answer. Yeah, this is a this is a data structure. It's it's done by a linked list. You know it's appreciate linked list. This abstract syntax tree. Yes, yes. That I have told O N cube. O N cube not acceptable to us. We try to make it O N. And this is the we call L L. L L parser is a top down parser. It is basically left to right, left most animation. Say all are fortunately all language are left to right, unlike Urdu, it is right to left, but all programming languages from left to right and leftmost derivation is easier derivation, but LR parser 
left to right, but I go for right most derivation so I can compact with the rules so that I can derive from the right hand side uh, towards left hand side, which is a more powerful grammar. You can argue why this is LR is more powerful until and unless you do this, you cannot say this. LL parts are easier, it can be hand built. LL1, you already know, S grammar, LR. There also can be done over in time, but the parser is difficult to build. Uh, in the parser, uh, you need a tool. Uh, it's generally not hand built, it is a tool. The tools are available. Uh, their input is your rules. Uh, in your in Chomsky's normal form, you have to supply rules and it, is automatically, it automatically writes a parser. The tool is called YAC, yet another compiler compiler. It is available in Linux machine for with C language. I have to check it. There must be some tool in Python also. It is there definitely. Uh, so, you can practice. So, parser is there in if you want any menu driven uh, or anything which can communicate with your bot, you need a parser. Yeah, this is a basically parsing the top down is a backtrack. I have told this is brute force. So that I go fire one rule, it is not matching, I come back. So we have to, I have to save the states <coughs> from where I am going, excuse me, then again come back. Uh, this takes a time and space, time complexity and space complexity. Time complexity may touch O n cube. Space complexity, you have to extra space for you know, keeping track, but predictive parsing is most interesting. Predictive parsing means you can at least see one symbol at a time. We call it LL1. Uh, don't call it LL0. LL0 means I am blindly doing this, um, like backtracking. So that is not even backtracking also. We always see look ahead. Otherwise, it will take infinite time. So predictive parsing is LL0, LL1, sorry, or LL2, LL3. LL1 means I can see one character at a time, LL2 character definitely if we see two characters so we can look ahead uh, you, which rule to fire if you put three, three character so definitely if you can look ahead and it is easy the string you can look ahead so the grammar can be much more better and powerful so predictive parsing the techniques whatever they are using will be using the same technique in bottom up parsing and bottom up parsing I have told from right to left I am trying to associate the rules and we can get it over in time and there are also various kinds of bottom up parsing. So next class I will try to make material from LL1 parsing, a separate material on LL1 parsing and separate material on shift reduce and operator precedence parsing, LR parsing. So I am making a small videos so that you can check and any question you can come and I will discuss in threadbare in the classes also you can so uh, both the techniques will try and you have to be given an assignment uh, some small test will be you have to give online okay any doubt you can put the question yeah it is the uh, top down this is i have called the brute force it should be avoided uh, this is non recursive descent this is the we will try this is ll1 parsing now, what is LL? L means left to right, leftmost derivation. This is top down and K symbols look ahead. And this is the with non recursive descent we use try. These are two recursive descent and brute force method. Almost it is a backtrack. We, we should not be without backtrack. That is non recursive said and one look ahead. Even in one look ahead, it is powerful. Yes, one symbol required leftmost, this is called LL1. Yes, this is the very interesting, uh, I will end this with these symbols, though in earlier uh, lecture also I have ended with this. This is a, a whole gamut of the deterministic context free grammar. So, it is not guaranteed, even if it is a deterministic context free grammar, you can find ambiguous, unambiguous grammar. So, it is not easy. It is not easy. There is no such rule. So, you have to get it the unambiguous grammar and then not only finding unambiguous grammar, it solves that you can get a parser out of it. 
then you have to make your rule such a way you can get LL1 parser. Simplest parser is LL1. LL0 I do not think is a simplest parser, it is a stupid parser because you look ahead nothing. So, it is nothing brute force. So, most simple parser is S grammar, LL1 grammar, uh, definitely S grammar by looking at the terminal that you know there is only one rule and the LL1 this is the this is the range of the programming languages but you can represent only very small space if you go look ahead more symbols you, your grammar is take more space of this more powerful powerful means it can be solved in the ON type remember all this parsing can be done ON not ON cube but in on the contrast if you go for bottom up parsing then the uh, LR0 which is definitely uh, take bigger amount of LL0 totally subset uh, superset LR0 is superset uh, these are all different types of bottom up parsing uh, simplest is the most powerful LRK that means you are looking at more than one one two three four uh, which takes almost all the space there are some grammar which you cannot touch so these grammars there these grammars are ON cube grammar Okay. Uh, at least uh, if, if you can find rule, uh, it can be done because all this development is done in last 40, 50 years. There are a lot of to be developed till done. It can be done. If you can uh, find different types of grammar, you can, can parsing can be way in cube. The active research field till 20 years back. Till now the papers are coming and in unambiguous grammar, no hope till now. Okay. So, any questions, you can make your microphone on put a question. So, we have already finished top down portion, top down parsing, brute force we have finished, we have started LL1, we have finished, now we have to go for bottom up parsing. And any question, doubt, please tell me. You make a microphone on. Sir. Yeah. Who is name? Hello, sir. Yes, uh, tell sir, me. Actually my, uh, Aditya, sir. Yeah. sir, actually my previous question, that is the stream of atoms that asked in UGC net sir actually this is wrong. You, you, it, no 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 UGC no atoms can be there first of all see whichever paper it is there it may be uh, whatever I am saying here it cannot be atoms it is a tokens okay. I think you are mistaken somewhere it is not atoms it is a tokens string of tokens sir, in, it's, okay, wrong. Sir. it's wrong sir, it's wrong sir syntax analysis please sir yes in syntax analysis yes Actually, sir, answer is in syntax analysis phase. Wrong, wrong. So I am telling. So, you send me the screenshot in WhatsApp group. Okay. Uh, it is yes, a, first yes, of all, it is not atom. It is, we are not in uh, molecular technology. It is not a chemistry class uh, or physics class. It is a token. First of all, it is a token. Uh, token is unbreakable. Okay. It is a token. So, even the I variable has a token uh, and the operator has a token. And uh, what you get after your uh, after your uh, lexical analysis, you will get a token. It is a, it is a serial series of token. Maybe if it is a C language, it will be separated with semicolon. Now, our job is with these tokens, we have... Drama is unambiguous. In it, I have told number of times again and again. When